Think working out has to be hard? Well, think again. HIIT workouts appear to do the impossible by helping you burn more calories than a 40-minute run in a quarter of the time. Better yet, they also build muscle, improve athletic performance and give you more energy. They've been transforming the lives of people all around the world and if you want to achieve one of those cover model physiques, then this is probably just what you're looking for. Ready to get started with the most highly effective and efficient workouts on the planet? Then let's get started. Along the way, we'll discover that there's a lot more to HIIT than just the basic alternating speeds. We'll learn some advanced techniques like cardio acceleration, fartlek training, speed drills, concurrent training, metacon, tabata, finishers and more. Let's HIIT it. If you want to build muscle, you need to cause muscle damage and metabolic stress. By lifting weights, you can cause a build-up of damage and this will provide precisely the stimulation you need to trigger muscle growth during rest. To lose fat, improve your fitness and get better health though, you need to use cardiovascular training. Cardiovascular training is any type of training that involves exerting yourself for an extended period of time. Very often this will mean running long distances, with jogging perhaps being the most popular form of cardio training. Not far behind though are swimming, cycling, skipping, rowing and others. Traditionally, this kind of cardiovascular training has been steady state. That means you put on your running shoes, you step out the door and you run for about 40 to 60 minutes. It's steady state because you're maintaining a steady level of exertion throughout the course of the exercise. In this case, you're jogging at a set pace and then maintaining that pace. For a long time, this was thought to be the very best way to burn the maximum number of calories and to improve fitness. There was a good theory behind why this should be the case. Specifically, it was thought that there was an optimal fat burning zone and that this could be found at roughly 70% of your maximum heart rate. This makes sense in theory, seeing as faster than 70% of your MHR will put you past your anaerobic threshold. In other words, you will be running so fast that you wouldn't be able to rely on your aerobic energy system for fuel. You simply couldn't burn fat quickly enough and so you will be forced to rely on energy stored in your muscles as ATP and glycogen. It would appear to make sense then that running at 70% of your MHR and maintaining the maximum pace at which the body burns fat should result in the maximum weight loss. But this isn't what modern research has found. HIIT stands for High Intensity Interval Training and it completely turns this concept on its head. In HIIT, you actually alternate between bursts of intense exertion, such as sprinting, and periods of relatively low intensity exercise, like jogging or power walking. This way, you are switching from your anaerobic energy system to your aerobic system and back. Switching between burning energy stored in your blood and muscles and energy stored as fat. But what makes this so effective is what happens after the anaerobic training. When you exert yourself maximally by sprinting or exercising otherwise at 100%, you can deplete any energy that might have been available from sources other than fat. This means your body can only burn fat for energy, you know, there's no other option remaining. Thus, you will then burn even more fat during the aerobic portions of the exercise. And when you finish and go home, you will continue to burn fat stores because you'll be low on store glycogen. This is what some people refer to as the afterburn effect, and it means that after an intensive session of HIIT, you can continue to burn more calories for the entire remainder of the day. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.